okay hello everyone welcome to our channel code with sunny and today i will be discussing the second problem alien generator of kickstart round 3 2021 okay so actually i think this problem is the very very easiest problem of this entire contest and the reason you can easily find it out when i will explain if you are stuck upon some concept no need to worry about i will explain that also overall i will if uh, i have to rate this problem i of uh, in order of the levels of this contest uh, level of the problems of this contest then i will rate this as the easiest problem of uh, this problem requires the concept of basic maths factorization in the square root of time finding the divisors of a particular number in square root of time you can easily do that then get the full score for this problem okay so without wasting our time let's jump over this to this problem okay one thing i forgot to mention over that if you want a uh, uh, easier version of this problem or a little a similar pro problem to this one then i will recommend one problem uh, allies and candies hacker earth yeah you can find uh, the solution as well as the explanation over here also you can easily see the pro problem allies and candies if you are if you want to do uh, do this problem then i will recommend to do this problem then come back over to this problem i alien generator then you will feel an ease to solve this problem otherwise uh, or you can say you may get some hint to solve the actual problem uh, that has come over in the google kickstart round and if you are the phone then you can find one of my videos that uh, the google is recommending allies and candies hacker at february easy you can go over there also so okay so coming back to this problem so i will just find a key point of this problem okay so there will be some given the value of uh, g you can see and we need to find uh, okay so for every test case find the total possible values of k and what is that k okay so, so i will i'm not going to read the entire problem statement so i will read some key points on the First day, it's not inputs a positive integer key. Then generator will produce k gold bars on that day, and the next consecutive day would be k plus one, k plus two, k, and it goes on up to k plus i minus one for the ith day. Okay. Now consider k two g eight and uh, this all these stuffs. Okay. So for a given g, astronauts would like to know how many possible values of k. On day one, would eventually produce exactly G gold bars. Now this is going to be important. We need to produce exactly G gold bars. Okay. So if you are uh, really not understanding this entire problem statement, no need to worry. What? Let's come over to the examples to understand this problem with the help of examples. Also, you need to take care that G at most goes up to 10 power 12. So you need to have an efficient solution under the time limit of constraints. You can say. Uh, you need to have a maximum of 10 power 6 iterations to solve this problem in the best possible way. So let's understand this problem with the help of examples. What actually this problem is going to state that I'm not interested in reading the entire story of this problem. Okay, so I'm just converting the problem statement in mathematical form. Then you can feel an ease. I will recommend to read out the entire problem statement at least once. Okay, so I'm just converting this entire statement into a mathematical form. Okay, so let's move further. Okay, so I will just explain over over here that is we will be given some g and uh, we can start on with any value of k like suppose g is given as 10 and uh, we can start on the very first day and then next day that is on the very first day my value of k let's say is 1 next day my value of k would become 2 and next day my value of k would become 3 and next day my value of k would become 4. I need to find what are the distinct values of original values of k that is if I will start with the value of k as 1 then on the fourth day that is on the first day my k is 1 second third fourth on the fourth day I will have the sum exactly equal to 10 and this is exactly equal to this g okay so it means that if I will start at the with the value of k equal to 1 then at the fourth day I will get the value of the sum exactly equal to the 10 and this sum is g okay and what will happen if i will start my k with 10 on the very first day you can easily see my sum will be 10 on the very first day itself now we, we, we have been given some value of g 
and we have been asked to find it out what are the distinct values of k should we start with such that after spending some days let's say i days then my sum would be exactly coinciding with the value of g we need to find that distinct values okay so the only and only advantage that i can see over here is the consecutive values and what is that consecutive values okay so we need to have the sum as g and we can start over here uh, f start over any of the integers like uh, we can start over 3 4 5 6 and let's say after a sum sub array sum like uh, starting at this position and ending at uh, some let's say 11 so this is actually a sub array of length 9 length 9 i think 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 yes obviously 9 so i should have to find any such sub array whose sum is exactly equal to this g and i will find all those distinct sub arrays note that i am talking about distinct because it means that if i will start with k equal to 3 after some i days and here i is 9 after 9 days i will have the sum and this is sum s and this sum would become equal to this g note that i can start on any days any of the day okay and i should i can end on the any of the day and the only advantage is all the values is going to be like consecutive how this is going to help us okay so what i'm going to do is uh, one thing that should be observed over here that uh, this 3 4 5 6 7 up to 11 can be written in uh, another form and what is that another form can i write this sum starting from 3 to 11 into this format or not just tell me that up to 11 this is the sum from 1 to 11 minus this is the sum from 1 to yes 1 to 2 so this is actually this sum from 3 to 11 so this gives me the idea that yes i can build the solution build the best solution for this problem using this concept since i need to find a such sub array whose sum is exactly equal to g and that sub array starting point can be any of the integer so what i'm going to do is suppose i will find some uh, some sub array whose sum is exactly equal to g i have the ending point of this sub array and i have the beginning point of this array. both are unknown but one thing that I know is I can start from the very first integer that is you can see over here this one and I can go up to this end and this end let's call it as n2 note that I'm calling this end of this sub array as n2 and I will call my n1 as the beginning of the sub array position integer minus 1 that is this 2 would be n1 over here so how this is going to help us okay so for every sub array i can write the sub array sum as sum start into sum of the integers starting from one up to the end of this uh, sub array minus sum of the integers starting from one up to this uh, beginning of the sub array minus one position and uh, one thing that uh, gives me the advantage over here that i have a fixed position and that fixed position is one how this is going to help us okay so let's understand over here that is we can always write sum okay i will zoom over here like that okay sum of uh, first n uh, let's say n2 integers as can say 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n2 i can write it as n2 okay n2 into n2 plus 1 and the whole divided by 2 i can write it as like that that is sum of uh, first n2 integers that is starting from 1 okay so i will also pick up over here sum of first n1 integers and how this is going to apply we need to find any sub array whose sum is exactly equal to this g i will mark any integer that is ending point of the sub array as n2 and beginning minus 1 position as n1 and what i am going to do is since i have fixed my uh, one thing that is i will always start with 1 so can i say that uh, let's say okay so i will mark it as s1 and uh, let's say i will mark it as s2 okay so can i say that uh, 
my s1 okay so i will mark it as h2 over here and this as well okay my h2 minus s1 must be this g and if i will calculate something you can easily say that uh, okay so my n2 square plus n2 minus uh, n1 square minus uh, n1 that must be equal to twice of this g okay so if i will perform h2 minus s1 equal to g my equation would become like that so can i club this n2 square and n1 square yes i can club so i can write it as n2 plus n1 into n2 minus n1 minus also n2 minus n1 yes i can do that must be exactly equal to twice of g so i will take n2 minus n1 common then it would become n2 minus n1 into and i can take n2 plus n1 and uh, i think uh, if i will take uh, this one i should have to write n2 um, yes if i will take minus as common n2 plus n1 yes i can write it as uh, okay so let me check it out if i have done some calculation mistake or what so if i will perform a minus sign my would become n2 square minus n1 square yes this will be n1 square plus n1 then minus sign will come over here then n2 minus n1 then it will it will have plus sign okay uh, so yes i'm right over here so n2 square minus n1 square will come over here then plus n2 minus n1 yes again there should be a minus sign yes n2 minus n1 so if i will take n2 minus n1 as common then my this one would become n2 plus n1 plus 1 yes must be exactly equal to twice of g yes okay now it gives me the idea that uh, can i do this like let's say this is uh, a new g dash okay so if i will find out the number of uh, uh, if i will find out the divisors of this g dash okay so i i can always write it as g dash can be represented into two numbers a into b where a and b are the factors let's say g dash is 24 i can write it as 3 into 8 or 4 into 6 or 2 into 12 or 1 into 24 this is the same way so if let's say i i have this g dash as uh, okay 24 i can always write it as uh, 1 into 2 uh, 1 into 12 or i can write it as 2 into i think not 1 into 12 okay so 1 into 24 and 2 into 12 and i can write it as uh, 3 into 8 i can also write it as 4 into 6 i can also write it as so 8 into 3 but i'm not going to consider because it will actually have the swapped values of the already taken pairs okay so you can say i will have this pair i will have this one i will have this one i will have this one now uh, you can easily see n2 minus n1 if i will take this pair like 4 into 6 you can easily see n2 minus n1 can be this 4 n2 minus n1 can be this 6 now how i can identify that note that i have already broken this g dash into two things that is n2 minus n1 into n2 plus n1 plus 1 so this is always going to be greater than this one okay and uh, how it is going to be correct you can easily see this n2 plus n1 plus 1 will always be some greater value so i will say 6 would correspond to n2 plus n1 plus 1 and this 4 will correspond to n2 minus n1 so in general i can always say it let's say it is as b and let's say it is as a so i can always find n2 as b plus a minus 1 upon 2 and i can always find n1 as how can i find that b minus a yes and minus 1 upon 2 yes by solving the these two equations Note that uh, this b should be always greater than or equal to a and uh, you can easily see that uh, I can easily find the, all the solutions. How I can find that just factorize this g dash into two factors or you can easily say find out the divisors. If i is the divisor of this g dash I can always find another divisor as g dash by i. Okay. 
so g dash by i must be greater than this i greater than or equal to i i can always find this n2 and i can always find this n1 okay then i will check it out if uh, n2 into n2 plus 1 upon 2 minus that is h2 minus s1 must be exactly equal to this g i have this pair as our answer okay so this is going to be like a very much a good technique to solve these type of problems as i've already suggested one another problem allies and candies you can have a similar solution like that okay so this is basically a good idea factorize in o of square root of n time find the divisors find our corresponding another divisor if my i is the divisor of g, uh, this g dash i have another divisor as g dash by i now i have two factors let's say a and b i can solving these two one we have two equations two unknowns n2 and n1 then i will solve it out and find out n2 and n1 and check if this is going to hold the condition increment your answer okay one thing that should be also noted that uh, b plus a minus 1 should be divisible by 2 it means that uh, this a and b should have the parity same or different if uh, both are even you can easily see this b plus a will be even and b plus a minus 1 will be odd then it will it won't be divisible by 2 and what about if both are odd both are odd then i will have the sum as even then sum minus 1 as odd then again it is not divisible by 2 it means that b and a should have a different parity okay so it means that if you find the two divisors of g dash such that product of divisors is exactly equal to this g dash then you must also claim that a and b must have different parity then only you have the answer as uh, the and the pair that you should include into your answer okay so let's uh, this uh, code is like a very very much simple if you understand this thing that i will first find out the sum from 1 to n2 then subtract the sum from 1 to n n1 minus 1 no 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 1 to n1 and i can always find the pair n2 and n1 by factorizing this g dash okay g dash note that i am talking about g dash okay so let's look over the code and where is that code and here it is the code dot cpp Yes, you can see an alien generator time complexity square root of g space complexity O of 1. Now you can see I have taken this g and I will just uh, not uh, return this g dash. I will just uh, make g as twice of its original value. What I have done is I trade up to square root of g. If I find a divisor, then find a and find this b. Note that b should always be greater than or equal to any. It is giving the correct value. Because I will iterate up the square root of g, then if uh, I found a divisor, then I will find this b as g by i, and which is always going to be like greater than or equal to a. And what I am going to check if uh, parity is going to be like same or not. If parity is going to be like same, how I am going to check the parity? Take the modulus 2 value and find the bitwise odd. And if the bitwise odd is coming out to be 0 of the parity values of b mod 2 and the a mod 2, then I can claim that both have the same parity. I am not going to continue with this one. So I will use the continue function to skip the following lines of code below that. Okay. Now the operations are really, really simple. Now as I have already said n2 plus n1 plus 1 exactly equal to b and n2 minus 1 is a. So I found this n2 and n1. Okay. And I have found the sum also. Sum 2 and sum 1. Then I will check sum 2 minus sum 1 is exactly equal to g by 2 note that i'm making this equal to g by 2 since i've already uh, incremented that is i've already doubled my value of g by 2 okay and if this is equal then increment your answer by 1 and finally return the answer this will give you all test cases passed yeah okay so let us submit this code okay i think uh, yes it would give us Okay, so I think the, this question is really comes into the category of very, very easy comprising of basic maths. Okay, so if you are still having some doubts related to any of the steps that I have told over there, then do come, do message me in the comment section of the video. And also I will recommend to join our telegram channel mentioned in the description section of the video. And also like this video, share this video and do subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you for watching this video.